Welcome back, Nick Lenz's Comic Corner Classic Slash Non Classic. This is episode number 899 and double shot number 793. Yes, the very next episode for this series is my 900th episode. As for what I'm going to do for it, I don't have any idea. That's the honest thing. I'll find out what, when I get a chance to get more books in from the library on Tuesday. Okay. Like I said in my last video, it's going to be a Marvel trade and kind of a DC trade. First up, it is New Avengers, Volume 5. Though you can kind of call this New Avengers by Brian Michael Bendis, Volume 5. Though they don't call it that. This collects the last four issues of New Avengers, Volume 2, which are also the last issues of the Brian Michael Bendis run. Yes, issues 31, 34 of New Avengers, Volume 2. By Brian Michael Bendis, who does the writing for these issues. And the artwork is done by each issue has got its own artist. For issue 31, it's Mike Gatos, who worked with him on the Alias book, which I was working with. He's like prior to this, he worked with him on Alias. He later did with him the Jessica Jones comic. She, currently, they do the, the series cover for Jinx, uh, Jinx World. Yes, it's an imprint for DC Comics, which Ben this is in charge of. It. It's like a bunch of mini series, really good mini series. Thirty two is done by Carlos Pacheco. Thirty three is Michael Avern Thirty four is done, and thirty four is done by Mike Diodato. Mike Diodato also is the cover artist for the whole thing with Ran Bardia, who's the colorist. Mm -hmm. This pretty much. Is sort of a loose follow-up to the first arc of this run. Yeah, when, when when the book was relaunched back in 2010. These issues came out in late 2013, early 2013. 2020, early 20... Yeah, these, these issues are basically the aftermath of AVX. Yeah, because at the end of that, like in the New Avengers issues, Luke Cage resigned from the New Avengers. Yeah, so he moves out of the Avengers mansion. So... I'm thinking, you know, like, who could be in charge of the team? Well, when the thing first started, they had Carol Danvers, who at the time this book started, became, was Miss Marvel, and she was named the second command of the team. And, of course, this is also the first time she's been seen by the members as being, like, Captain Marvel. This kind of takes place kind of not long after the events of issue one of Captain Marvel. Okay. And we have some strange, mystical stuff going on. Yeah. The culprit of this mystical stuff is Daniel Drum, the late brother of Jericho Drum, a.k.a. Brother Voodoo, a.k.a. Dr. Voodoo. Yeah, Dr. Voodoo got killed at the start of this run. Yeah, back in issue 5 of this volume. And Daniel Drum blames Dr. Strange and the Avengers for killing him. And in the first issue, Bendis decided that Riot have a character he created... Though this character kind of first appeared in my fraction book chronologically. Yes, the character of Victoria Hand. Yes, the same character who also appeared for about two episodes of Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes, the character who was later confirmed to be a lesbian. Yeah, and also who in the Dark Avenger Files really wanted to sleep with Moonstone. Yeah, she really wanted to have sex with her. I am not kidding about that. She seriously did. That's the way Bendis wrote her in the Dark Avenger Files. <laughs> Which, I'm like, okay. Yeah, that was kind of weird. The fact that, well, Bendis wrote her that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she gets killed by Daniel Trump in issue one. Also, Daniel Trump goes after Damien Hellstrom and Jennifer Kale. Those of you who don't know who the heck these two are, Damien Hellstrom is the literal son of Satan... And he made his first parents back in the first issue of Ghostwriter from the 70s. Yeah, this is when Johnny Blaze was the Ghostwriter, not Dan Ketch from the 90s or the Phantom Writer from the late 60s. I believe this character's creation of Roy Thomas. Jennifer Kale was a recurring character from the Man Thing comics. So, yeah, kind of a creation of the, of the late Steve Gerber. Yeah, and apparently Doctor Strange is blamed for her disappearance. How? What evidence do they have this? Oh, and by the way, who tries to arrest Doctor Strange? Why the frickin' FBI? It seems like almost half the time I see the FBI in fiction, they're written to be complete dicks. 
I'm not kidding about this. If you watch any episode of Law and Order, they are written to be not nice people. I mean, not crooked per se. They're basically like, oh, we're the higher authority. So we'll take your witness out, despite the fact this witness is also a, a cop killer. Yeah, this uh, I remember this happening from an episode of Law and Order Criminal Intent. The, it was a two-part that started the second to last season of the show, season nine. Though this put the show on hiatus for a couple of years. Yeah. So I'm thinking, no, when I'm reading this, I'm like, what evidence do they have that Doctor Strange is responsible for the disappearance of Jennifer Kale? And the characters are written to be like, who in the world is Jennifer Kale? I think maybe Spider Man may have heard of her due to her connection to Man Thing. Everybody else, I'm not surprised they never heard of her. Yeah. And. Then Maria Hill shows up saying she's the acting director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, this is during a period of time when she was definitely director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Well, technically, she's she's not the regular director of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's supposed to be Daisy Johnson at this point in time. But because of what happened Page Seek Avengers, she's named acting director. She was going to full direct level later. And she gets in a Jared and what's and this is basically I heard this term in the series Alcatraz. It's called a jurisdiction a jurisdictional pissing match. Yes, this is a term I heard from the series Alcatraz back in the first I believe it was the first episode of the series I heard this term. Yeah, she gets into a fight with the FBI agent. Like, yeah, my my, my superior ordered, ordered her ordered her his arrest. He, and she says, I'm your superior. S.H.I.E.L.D. That outranks FBI. Which is true. Because FBI, because the S.H.I.E.L.D. is an international organization. And Avengers fall under their jurisdiction. And the, the mansion is Avengers property. Despite the fact it's owned by Luke Cage. Yeah. So, they say, oh yeah. The Avengers not cooperate with them? Yeah, not cooperate because you had no freaking evidence. Yeah, I have no idea why Bendis writes him this way, but he does. I mean, I like how he writes the Avengers, but I do not like how he writes the FBI. And from what I've, I've actually met somebody, I actually know somebody who actually has worked with the real life FBI. They are nothing like they way are in the fiction, where they'll basically trample over an investigation just because they feel like it. Yeah, they're not like that in real life. They will cooperate with police. The only show I've seen where they have a positive picture of the FBI and they do work with police is a serious criminal minds, which is going out there this year. Yeah. So, and at the end of this, we have it where Daniel John gets into a fight. Of course, he also possessing like all the Avengers, not just new Avengers, but also the regular T Avengers. And, excuse me, the 20 end of it, Doctor Strange, who had given up being Source of Supreme. Actually, this this happened like right. This happened like during Dark Reign. So he had not been Source Supreme at this point for three years. It was Brother Voodoo, and after his death, there was no Source Supreme for like two years. And eventually, the Ancient One comes back and says, "Oh yeah, Doctor Strange is the Source Supreme again, and he's still Source Supreme this very day." Also, I also got praised. This is also the this is also the, the wraparound cover they have for the trade. This is also the connecting covers for the four issues themselves. It is interesting, though, that they have a four-part storyline that concludes this. Also, they have a very similar storyline happening in the pages of Avengers, though that 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 particular storyline was known for bringing back the Wasp, who got killed off in the pages of Secret Invasion. Yeah, they read kind of where she was into another universe, the microverse of all places. Though that was a follow-up to Secret Invasion, this is a follow-up to the first arc, which is not a bad idea for Bendis to do. Though it's the first arc of this era, not of the previous era that Bendis did from 2005 to 2010. This is the one from 20, 2010 onwards. Mm -hmm. Yes, even though this does end Bendis' like, eight-year run in the book, this is not the last thing when to review for New Avengers, so I'm not going to give my final thoughts like I did with other trades I reviewed lately. This is only like the fourth trade I review the, the collect issues for New Avengers. Yeah, I'm going to give this book a 9.5 out of 10. For Bendis' run, the only thing I have reviewed for New Avengers is the last three trades of the first volume for the series, the complete collection, book six, which is a combination of the first two trades of this run and this. So roughly about five trades I have reviewed so far that collect 
Brian Michael Bendis is one of our new Avengers. You know, oh yeah, and also this tree has something really special. I was kind of surprised that this thing had this. What did they have? A cover gallery of every single Avengers comic book that Bendis did from Disassembled all the way to this. Yes. I mean, look at this. Every single, like, every single, like, comic book he did from the Avengers 500 to 504, the first 64 issues of Avengers Volume 1, the, the three annuals, the Dark Reign, the list is in here. Let's see, what else? You have, well, aside from these issues, you also have, let's see, there is the entire Dark Dark Avengers, the first volume of that. The new Avengers Illuminati miniseries was the group that he created. The entire second volume of, of New Avengers. The Avengers Prime issues, the Avengers Volume 4 run, the annuals, and of course, Avengers Assemble. Every single cover from every single Avengers book he did over the course of an eight-year period of time. The story here is really good. I love the artwork in here. I'm going to give this book a 9.5 out of 10, despite the fact I really don't care for the picture of the FBI in here. And also, they have an FBI dot. Apparently, Mary Hill eventually convinced, convinced that this is all true, what Dr. Strange is saying, due to an agent being possessed by Daniel Jump and killing himself. Oh, yeah, and apparently at this point, Daniel Jump has been dead apparently for 10 years. Somehow, it's really weird. Slide time scale. That's basically how I, how I think of it. Though Marvel has been using that for a long time. Next up is a kind of a DC trade, though it's mostly just a manga book. Normally, I don't review manga books, but this second one I've reviewed, but this is superhero related one, and it's mainly characters from DC Comics. This is Batman the Justice League Volume 1. This is a manga book that was released just last year. And it collects the first eight issues, eight chapters, mind you, of the Batman and Justice League manga series. Though this is translated. And the story for this one is, now, mainly the, the two characters who get, like, or seen throughout these eight issues is Batman and Superman. Then we also see appearance with the Joker, Lex Luthor, Jim Gordon pops up in here. And also an original character, this guy right here, his name is... Ryu, I think his name is, yeah. He comes to Gotham because because his family are old friends of the Waynes, and he really wanted to meet Bruce Wayne. And he comes there because he wanted to find what happened to his parents, because he didn't believe that they didn't die, and they died in his accident. And Batman believes him. How? Because he finds his mother in a factory run by the Joker, who... Now, I first saw this character, I thought it was a woman, but nope, it's a guy. Despite the fact this character's got long hair and glasses. Yeah, and apparently this character is a ninja. Yeah, it's a really fun little storyline, but I'm looking forward to reading more of this because I found this to be very interesting. Now, the thing is, despite the fact that Cyborg, despite the fact they had New 52 Land for Justice League, I mean, look at Superman. He has the, the Jim Lee look because the collar is there. In the case of Batman, this is actually an original look for him. It's not, let's say, the Jim Lee look. It's more like an original look for the manga. And Wonder Woman, yeah, her, her basically her main body suit of her outfit, that's the, from the Jim Lee look. But her necklace and tiara are completely different from the Jim Lee look. For Superman, I think the only thing they changed, the only things they changed from his New 52 look to this look is the S is drawn a little different, and the belt buckle is a little different as well. Yeah. But I love it whenever you have a Japanese company and they publish, like, American characters in their manga book. Yeah, I know they've done it for Batman, but I've only reviewed, like, I've only reviewed, like, one of that. But that was actually really, I really wish the library had more of those books. Yeah. So this is the second one I, I've actually read. Now, I know for a fact there's also Spider-Man manga as well. I've read the first five, but that was basically published in the U.S. This is basically made in Japan, though this is a translation of it. Mm -hmm. But like I said, the only reason I'm reviewing this because it features DC comic characters. Normally, I would not review manga on this channel on this particular episode, but because these characters are here, that's the only reason why that's the only reason I'm reviewing this. This is actually really good. 
Though it feels a lot like a Batman story, guess I'm just like, though, that's the point of the title. Batman just like. I'm going to give this book roughly a 9.5 out of 10. Excuse me, yes. The book even also has interview with the creator of the series, and she found it difficult to draw DC characters, though the way she draw the writer of this book is a woman. Yes. The way the Joker is depicted in here is a bit bizarre. Like, really? This is her depiction of the Joker? Okay, and, and it's apparently partially based upon the Heath Ledger look. This apparently is the Joker in this continuity. Yeah, this is the Joker. Okay. Even though I thought there's some random guy who just looks like a clown makeup. At least Batman looks like, yeah, you can tell that, yes, this is Batman. Yep, the rest of the characters you can easily tell is them. Just by looking at them. Yeah. Yeah, but some of the other characters get slight redesigns. Like, let's see. I mean, take a look, let's say, Bruce Wayne. I mean, when I first saw him in the book, I thought he was Phoenix Wright from the Ace Attorney anime. Yeah, it's a very similar look to that, though that's probably how a lot of artists depict men. Yeah, this is how Superman looks in his continuity, and this is how Clark Kent looks. They also have Lois Lane here, pre beer for a brief cam, and that was it. And this is Aquaman. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is how Aquaman's design looking here. Now, I thought I thought this might be the New 52 look. But, it kind of does look like it, except that Aquaman never wore a necklace. I can't think of any iteration of Aquaman's suits. Where he wore this freaking necklace. I have no idea when he did this. We have... I think this is supposed to be Hal Jordan. But he's drawn to look like Kyle Rayner. Yeah, with that hairdo. He kind of reminds me of Kyle Rayner. Yeah. And here's how the artist draws Wonder Woman here. Mm -hmm. Cyborg. Well, Cyborg. Here's Jim Gordon. Yeah, it's a good look for him. I like the look. It's actually really accurate to normally pick it up. His mustache is a little different than usual. Yeah. I think they have Lex in here. Here's, here's Harley Quinn. Now, if you're curious, though, what the heck does Lex Luthor show? Now, he shows up in this book. But he looks a bit different than usual, Lex does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he kind of looks like normal depiction of Lex. Like, from other media. Yeah, this is Lex Luthor. Okay, yeah, I can believe this is Lex Luthor just by looking at him. Bald head, suit, yep. It's traditional Lex Luthor. I'm going to get this book roughly a 9.5 out of 10. It's really good. And I highly recommend it. People are fans of the Justice League. So check out this book. It's really good. Alright, so that's it for this particular review. Stay tuned for tomorrow. For probably about one video. It'll probably be... Review of Season 5 for Case Closed, okay? Back to you next review. Bye.